This is Kids in Space. I'm Kid, and I'm flying solo today. Um, my right-hand woman, Space, isn't here today. And so we'll just have to carry on without her. In any case, I wanted to do a video on the Young Turks. Now, I love the Young Turks. I think I align with them almost 100%, 99%. 95% something along those lines um, Only every so often do I find myself disagreeing with them and in this case what I'm about to say is not so much a disagreement, but I Just have a fundamental problem with their consistency on this specific topic of Right-wing conservatives speaking on college campuses So recently I watched a video by the Young Turks titled Trump stooge booed off stage by Georgetown law students and in that video Anna and Jenk discuss how the Georgetown Law students, rightfully so, protested the Acting Department of Homeland Security Secretary Kevin McAleen from giving a speech on immigration law at their school. Obviously, Anna and Jenk both agree that the students did the right thing because it's a bit hypocritical of the school to invite an agent of the Trump administration to give a speech on immigration law when the Trump administration actively denigrates and holds the rule of law in contempt. The school could have chosen a guest speaker from a number of nonprofit immigration law organizations, such as the American Immigration Council, United We Dream, the Young Center for Immigrant Children's Rights, National Immigration Law Center, Florida Immigrant Coalition, and Families for Freedom. This is a short list of nonprofit immigration law organizations I found with a simple Google search. Georgetown had a responsibility. They had an obligation to present their students with an immigration lawyer fighting on behalf of immigrants and their rights. But instead, they chose to sully themselves by inviting a person that is willing to make Trump's anti-immigration fantasies a reality. That is truly disgusting and abhorrent. And so, I agree with Anna's and Zheng's assessment of the situation. I agree that that fucking loser should have been booed off stage. In fact, I hope he loses his job because none of these ghouls deserve to lead our country. But what I don't agree with is that Kevin McAleen is a unique guest speaker deserving of our condemnation and moral outrage. In the past, the Young Turks have defended people like Ben Shapiro, Ann Coulter, and Milo, and Milo Yalanopoulos, just to name a few, when college students protested their appearance on campus or colleges disinvited them. To the Young Turks, Kevin McAleen is in a position of power and should be challenged because of it. They view what the Georgetown Law students did as noble and just. But whenever college students protest any big-brained conservative mouthpiece, they basically call those students rash or foolhardy. They don't seem to believe or think that these conservative mouthpieces are in a position of power because it would mean they are also in a position of power and could be disinvited from college campuses on a whim. But the reality is, they all are in a position of power. Having a media presence of this scale puts a person or organization in a position of power that is capable of shaping the opinions of millions of people. However, it is how a person or organization wields that power that is important. The Young Turks advocate for nonviolence and economic equality, while Ann Coulter calls for debt squads for immigrants, and Ben Shapiro states Israelis like to build, Arabs like to bomb crap and live in open sewage. Or should Milo sex between adult men and the and 13 year old boys is okay as long as the boys' sexual organs are mature, Yiannopoulos be allowed to come on college campuses and give a rousing speech on the efficacy of pedophilia? No, he fucking shouldn't, and none of his ilk should be given a platform to spew their insane and, quite frankly, harmful ideology and philosophy. And usually I'm in favor of allowing different voices on these campuses so they can, you know, share their ideas, speak their mind. Even if you disagree with them, you're on a college campus, you should be uncomfortable. Your preconceived notions should be challenged. And no, Anna, a person's preconceived notions shouldn't be challenged by them or anyone like them. These conservative voices are being heard by right-wing extremists and are being used to justify right-wing terrorist actions. I'll be honest, I'm not a free speech absolutist because there are people in this world that misuse their platforms by inciting and nurturing right-wing violence. 
So the same reaction that Young Turks recently had to Kevin McAleen should be extended to most right-wing pundits because their ideology is becoming increasingly unhinged and untenable. Hey, thanks for listening to me rant and rave about my displeasure with the Young Turks on this particular topic. A couple of things I didn't include in my assessment is that the current power structure is largely conservative and that we need to collectively hold those conservative voices accountable for the danger their rhetoric presents. We can't keep allowing them to get away with their subtly veiled racist sentiments by enabling them to go on college campuses to indoctrinate impressionable college students because what they say is edgy. The Young Turks should understand this since this concept is similar to their stance against organized religion which has dumbed down a huge segment of our population to the point that they believe that Trump is a messiah sent by God. In order to better our society, these people need to be shunned and actively scorned and mocked for their ridiculous ideology that seems to excuse any criminal activity carried out by our criminal in chief. Well, I'm Kid, and thanks for hearing me out. Oh, and watch this cowardly piece of shit Kevin McAleen Try to say he's an ardent defender of free speech. He is truly one of the worst things to come out of the Trump administration. Uh, as a career law enforcement professional, I've dedicated my career uh, to protecting the right to free speech and all the values we hold dear in America uh, from, from all threats. So, okay, what I was going to start with is that I'd like to take our dialogue this morning above the politics in the daily news cycle talk about the challenges and efforts uh, that we faced over the past year, uh, but also given that this is primarily an audience of immigration lawyers, advocates, and law students, uh, to also talk about some of the fundamental issues we face with the current legal framework and its ability to address large-scale immigration flows. Okay, thank you. Have a good day.